All right. There is the question I was asking was, has anybody traveled across these Sindhan Punjab plains and seen the uh, cotton fields? Yeah. No, nobody. So, I mean, if you get a chance to travel, uh, do, uh, and especially in winters, you'll notice that farmers, what they do is they tend to cover their crops with this external, with this, um, with this shade made out of bamboo sticks and bushes just to protect the crop from the snowfall in winters. Uh, not, not snowfall, typically frost, basically, because the temperature falls below uh, average and that can basically cause the uh, cause frosting to occur and it destroys the crop. Cotton is very sensitive to frost. So the geographical requirements for a cotton crop are again 25 to 30 to 35 degrees Celsius is the average temperature for cultivating and dry and sunny days for the seasons of growth and cotton. And then obviously you have to protect it from frost as well. Ample rainfall is preferred. 1000 millimeters is fine. Um, with sunny periods, obviously you need a lot of sunlight for, for this crop to grow. Alluvial is the best type of soil, preferable level land is required and warmth for photosynthesis. High yielding varieties, HYV seeds of cotton that are available in Pakistan are Nayab, Parishma 557 and 149F. These are just a few types of seeds that are available. You don't have to remember the names of these, maybe just no two to three for reference in, in, in any question. You won't be directly asked about these HYV seeds for any of these crops, all right? Okay, areas of cotton production. Punjab, Sindh, yeah, mostly Punjab and Sindh. Um, so why do you think cotton is not suitable for northern areas? Guys, it's an open question. Yeah, because it's too cold for the cotton to grow. Exactly. It's too cold for the crops to grow and snowfall and winters can definitely destroy the crop. Uh, Punjab, the areas in Punjab are Khanewal, Sahiwal, Multan, Bahawalpur, um, Muzaffargar, Rahim Yar Khan, Faisalabad, Chang, so all of these are these major cities in Punjab that are suitable for the cotton production. Sindh, Nawabsha, Gotki, Sakar, Khairpur, Hyderabad, so these are the areas of Sindh that are suitable for the growth of cotton. All right, climatic hazards, cold temperature again, yeah, rain can damage the, these cotton balls. Floods can wash these crops away. Thunderstorms, cyclones can destroy these crops. Thunderstorms and cyclones are generally harmful for any crop. Yeah? Even droughts can kill these um, uh, plants. All right. Explain why cotton is grown in Punjab and provinces. You'll talk about all the geographical requirements. Guys, whenever a question asks you to explain why a certain area is suitable for that particular crop, you will always refer to the geographical requirements and how that area or how the geographical requirements of that area fulfill the uh, requirements of that plant, yeah? the, the requirements for the growth of that plant. All right, here's, an, here's a picture of cotton field. And here's a graphical question as well. There are two graphs. One is a line graph representing the temperature and the bar graph represents the rainfall. Guys, so always remember, bar graphs always represent rainfalls and line graphs represent temperatures, okay? So on the right side, on the right axis here, rainfall, you, you're gonna study this bar graph according to this axis, the information on the right Y axis and we'll study the information on of this line graph according to the information on the y-axis on the left side. Again, see, this line graph represents temperature, the bar graph represents rainfall. All right, moving on to sugar cane now. Sugar cane is again a kharif crop. It is a cash crop. It's used for commercial purposes. Um, products of sugar cane crops are white sugar, brown, brown sugar. Yeah. And after the prep, okay, so what happens is that when the land is prepared, these stalks of sugar cane that are 30 centimeter high are planted in the summer season, typically in April and May. 
uh, an average distance of 30 centimeters is kept between these stalks and so yeah and then they're fertilized they're irrigated and then they take six to seven months to grow in a full-fledged plant. Um, so what happens is that in a, in, in a sugarcane field, you won't have to clear the land after every, uh, I mean, after every harvest and then plant new plants every, every six months. If you plant, let's say, stalks uh, once, those stalks can be uh, harvested again and again for two to three years because that once you harvest a crop it will again uh, be cultivated and again grow into full flesh plant for two to three years successively yeah so this is an advantage you won't have to clear and plant the the, 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 um, the crop again and again every six months the geographical requirements for a sugarcane crop are 25 to 35 degrees Celsius temperature rainfall Heavy rainfall around 1500 millimeters, alluvium soil is the best one and level land is suitable. This is the picture of a sugarcane crop here. Let's see the producing areas, Punjab, Sindh, Khair Pratunfa, Faisalabad, Sagoda, Chang in uh, Punjab, Sindh, Hyderabad, Badin, in Peshawar, Maidan, and Jarsada in Khaibar So guys, uh, let's see this question here. Explain why is it important to increase the production of sugarcane and other agricultural products in Pakistan? So it's a very general question that's asking you to comment on why is it beneficial for the country to increase these agricultural productions of sugarcane and any other crop in the country. You need to explain these points as well. If you we focus on, let's say, these four points that the increasing population, so in order to meet the demands of the increasing population, it's important to uh, fulfill the needs. And this is why it is important to boost these production of agricultural products. How are high increase in exports? How is ex increase in exports an important point for this answer? Can anybody explain? Um, looking at the exports and the increasing number of exports, why is it important to increase the agriculture production of Pakistan? Because as much as we export and we, we need more production and more sugar cane to be, uh, mm -hmm. more sugar cane to be, uh, the crops to be planted because mm -hmm. As if our imports are exports are increasing, so the foreign exchange is also increasing. So because of that, the mm. farmers are because it's not uh, up to the need which is needed for the export. Okay. So and it is, and obviously it is a plus point because if you increase the exports, you're definitely decreasing the imports. On the other hand, yeah. Imports. And by decreasing the imports and increasing the exports, you uh, you arrive at a positive balance of payments. Has anybody studied economics here in O levels yes, or have. you have? So you can definitely, I mean, you can um, explain this in a better way that how your balance of payment is affected when the imports decrease and the exports increase. Yeah, this is exactly what's happening here. Uh, by the increasing exports, it's, a, it's important for the country to increase the production because uh, to, to reduce the dependency on the imports and become self-sufficient. Habiba says that it would give a boost to the economy. Absolutely. The major consequence is that when the balance of payment is positive, when the foreign exchange earnings are being earned properly when the imports are less the exports are more it is a direct benefit to the economy of the country because per capita income would increase people will uh, people will uh, earn more obviously and uh, this leads to even more employment more local trade and all of this is beneficial for the economy increasing the gdp of course yeah all right now here's a map this map shows the distribution of sugarcane farming. So if you, in, so guys, so you should know how to study a map first of all. The areas which are dark gray represent the locations with high production of sugarcane. The areas with gray, medium, and with lighter gray represent the low production of sugarcane. 
So question following this map is describe the distribution of high sugarcane production areas. So you're going to focus on all these dark gray areas and, and you'll explain these locations as to where the sugarcane production is high. So first of all, notice this point here, uh, the first one, um, this area. Which, which province is this, guys? I guess Cherry Province. Yes, this is KPK. Oh, yeah. Which province is this? All of this area. Yeah. Yeah, this is Punjab. And what about this? No, that's in. That's in. Absolutely. Okay. So we've identified the three major areas for the production, KPK, Punjab, and Sindh. So first of all, you'll write that the sugarcane production is high in KPK, Punjab, and Sindh. See, there's no sugarcane production in Balochistan. This is the entire Balochistan here. And there's not even, you could say, there's, there's no even light gray area here. So there's just no production of sugarcane Balochistan below, below here. And the reason could be, uh, you, I mean, you, you can get a question like this. Why? Is Balochistan not suitable for sugar in production? You can talk about the geographical requirements. That, that particular area doesn't fulfill the requirement for a sugar plant. The, the area is not level. The alluvium soil is not available. Most of the lands of Balochistan are, are, are barren. Um, you could you, you even talk about the government policies there and the, the low population density of Balochistan. Yeah, so different factors that you can talk about when, when it comes to uh, describing a particular area in terms of the crop production. Okay, so now... Let's look at the answer. You, you'll also be talking about some specific districts. For example, Peshawar in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Faisalabad in Punjab, and some areas of Hyderabad maybe in Sindh. Yeah. So you, the best answer to this question would be where you refer to these specific districts and overall provinces as well. Question number three says, why are these areas suitable for the cultivation of sugarcane? See, now again, a question is asking as to why an area is suitable. So you'll again be talking about the geographical requirements. Temperature 25, 35, irrigation makes it easier. Aluminum soil is available, good growth system. Yeah, why? Because an area must be well connected as well. So now I want you guys, in, in, in the light of all of the discussion here, I want you guys to comment on this question that I asked earlier. Why is Balochistan not a suitable area for the production of sugarcane? The points that you're going to tell now, I also want you guys to explain those points to me. Why is Balochistan not a suitable place for the production of sugarcane? Um, so the temperature is too high. Temperature is too high, okay. There's not enough um, irrigation, there's not enough rainfall, water sources for the growth of the cotton. Right. I mean, there's, and the soil, it's it's like it's desert area it's a desert area so mostly barren so you don't have the best quality of soil available yeah yeah all right perfect mm -hmm. anything else guys uh habiba and amna would you like to add anything to this we can talk about the human factors as well maybe the connectivity the government policies Balochistan is a barren land. The government don't want to just invest in the land because it would take a lot of their like money and a lot of. Mm -hmm. and, and because the population is low, so technically. The population is also low, and the, the people are not skilled over there. Also. All right. So, yeah, and Habiba has also written lack of infrastructure. So I can merge both of your points that the government is not really interested in developing the agricultural areas of Balochistan. Why? Because technically, and, and why, is the, why is there a lack of infrastructure? Because the population density is low. So the government or the authorities, they don't see a point in investing in such an area where you don't even, you, you don't have such a high local need for such a crop. And then if you want to, let's say, export the crop to other areas of the country or internationally, you will have to develop the infrastructure in terms of the roads, in terms of the connect connections, airports, railway networks. 
So because we don't, because Balochistan isn't very well connected, I mean, there are a lot of development projects taking place these days, but uh, up till date, it wasn't really a very well connected province. So this is what, this is all, these are all the factors that hamper the agricultural production. You, how will you transport such a heavy crop? Sugar cane is a very heavy crop. And it, I mean, you cannot even um, transfer it to, to long routes because the sugar content, the sugar cane, it starts to lose the sugar content. So it is very much advisable that the sugar, sugar cane farmland must be near, must be nearby the sugar cane industry. Because if you transport it over long distances, the sugar cane starts to lose its sugar content. And it is a very heavy mode of transportation. You need heavy trucks to transport it. And so, so it's technically not possible until and unless you develop a sugar industry in Balochistan. That, that is still, a, I mean, that's a huge investment. So the government isn't interested in doing that. This is an explanation for both of your points here. All right. Uh, let's move on now. Now we are talking about these small scale crops. You don't have to know every detail for these crops, just know the areas. Maize, this is, the, this is what a maize plant looks like. Look at the geographical requirements, 20, 30, 50 to 500 millimeters of rainfall, Punjab and Khaibar, that's it. Then fruit farming. Pakistan, here we, uh, the, the, the tropical fruits that grow in the country are citrus, mangoes, dates, bananas, and these citrus fruits are grown in Punjab, Sindh, NWFB, KPK, and Pakistan. Okay, um, most of these citrus fruits are grown in winter seasons, uh, and yeah, sorry, not winter, um, summer seasons. Yeah. Because has anybody been to these uh, fruit farms? Any experience of visiting a fruit farm, maybe anywhere? In any province? No? And all right. Now, oh yeah, guys, if you get a chance to travel across the country, maybe through motorway or GT road from Lahore to Islamabad or Islamabad to Lahore, you see a lot of these farms, Faisalabad, Selkodam, and, and, and across if you travel towards Sindh, maybe you'll see these farms in Khairpur. Mangoes are grown again in hotter climates. Uh, most of the areas of Sindh and lower Punjab are suitable for the production of mangoes. Dates are also grown in hotter climates. Sindh areas, Balochistan is also suitable for the production of dates there. Bananas, you need, uh, again, you need a very hotter climate for this. Rahimir Khan, Faisalabad, Sindh, Balochistan, there's Bela Plains that are suitable for the production of bananas here. Temperate fruits that are typically grown in winters in cool climates, apples, apricots, almonds, grapes. You can look at the areas that are displayed on the screen. Uh, yes, Amna, do you have a question? Uh, so why these fruits are grown in Balochistan? Uh, okay, so because again, the, the soil requirements are different for, for these fruit crops and sugarcane are, are, are different, certainly. This is why uh, fruits are grown over there. And secondly, fruits are consumed on a daily basis directly. You don't have to take the fruits to a milling industry. You don't have to take them to a mill and then process them further to, for, for daily consumption. Yeah, you can directly consume fruits from the farm, yeah, because they're uh, edible right after they're harvested. So this is another reason they're used by the local population. They can consume them day on day-to-day -day basis and you won't need any industry for further processing. You won't, you won't have to even export the fruit to other areas or internationally, all right? This crop is ready for use as soon as it's harvested. For example, mangoes maybe. Uh, as soon as you get the mangoes from the tree, you can you can definitely use them. Yeah, you can eat the mangoes. You won't have to send the mangoes to an industry to make any other product. So yeah, this is the reason. Um, whereas if you, if you talk about sugarcane, I, I I told you how it's a heavy transport and it loses its content. So it's not. I mean, so it's difficult for the government to develop industries in Balochistan, and obviously it's it's also difficult to transport the sugarcane to other provinces. This is not the case with fruits. Uh, all right, importance and advantages of fruits, demand increasing due to increase in population, 
export pakistan exports a great amount of foods to these gulf states earning foreign exchange extra income to farmers and businessmen used in food processing industries juices squashes balanced diet source of vitamins yeah uh okay we're done with these types of farms here and the next uh discussion we're going to be having is on the barani farming guys we are done with all the agricultural crops the major and the minor agricultural crops in pakistan is there any question is there anything that's not clear to anybody please let me know All right. Okay. Let's move on. A barani farm is basically any farm that depends on rainwater for um, the growth of plants, and the crops don't they don't depend on irrigation, and the the rainwater the natural rainwater is enough for the growth of those plants. um these barani farms are usually um i mean um used for these um subsistence farming because in large scale farming irrigation is definitely involved and it's difficult to even maintain a large scale farm through just rain water so most of the subsistence farms are the barani farms in pakistan um the labor is mostly the family members this lack of machines no fertilizers low crop yields as a result again because lack of water in at times these crops get destroyed when when whenever there is let's say um, a season with less rainfall than the average yeah so describe the methods of cultivation of wheat on barani land so you'll talk about how the plowing is done whenever the rain is when uh, whenever the, the, the rainfall season arrives so farmers they adjust or the entire period of plowing and cultivation and harvesting according to the rainfall patterns so whenever the rain falls the land is plowed the seeds are sown in winters there is very less use of fertilizer and mostly the farmers rely on natural fertilizers harvesting is done 3 to 6 months after cultivation and yeah and that is it okay livestock farming so we're done with the crop farming here the all kinds of crop farming the subsistence the commercial crop farming and um the barani farming as well the major minor crops in every detail regarding the crop farms then moving on to the livestock farming livestock farming is uh the animal farming the keeping of animals for uh the for the products such as animal skin milk meat eggs there again commercial and subsistence farming subsistence farming is again the um usually performed on a small scale the inputs you need for a subsistence livestock farm or fields for food you need water you need open land you need family members as uh, uh, I mean, people to work on the farm processes is natural breeding feeding milking manually slaughtering shearing wool from sheep and outputs are all of these products that we obtain such as milk meat wool eggs yeah this is a picture of an animal farm is what is a nomadic lifestyle question here with people that move around and they don't have one fixed place that they live exactly so people that move around for certain reasons maybe in search of water food for their animals so nomadic lifestyle is practiced by a lot of farmers who practice subsistence livestock livestock farming as well they move from a place to another in search of food and water for their animals um yeah so most of this nomadic farming is practiced in the desert areas of pakistan such as baluchistan third desert cholistan third desert 
desert air. All right. And yeah. Transhumans is also a sort of nomadic lifestyle. But the difference between nomadic and transhumans is that nomadic is, is a general term that describes the movement of people from areas to, from place to place in search of food and water. Transhumans, on, on the other hand, is a type uh, is, is when people move from higher areas from northern mountains to lower lands in winters because the climate gets extremely cold in the northern mountains and then they travel back from the lower lands to the northern mountains in summers because the climate gets extremely hot in the lower lands in during summers all right describe the medical farming called transhumans which is used in the area such as hunza so you're going to explain the seasonal movement they keep goats, sheep, and cattle move to higher slopes in summer and to lower and, and to uh, lower areas in, in winters. They move to find food and water. They stay in valleys in winters and permanent homes and animals kept in sheds in winters, shortage of food crops. Shortage of food crops is, an, is, is a consequence of transhumans because when animals feed off the crops of the northern mountains or the lower lands, uh, all of it results in overgrazing. Overgrazing is when crop is excessively used by the animal, then it's no more of any use for the farmers. Commercial livestock farming. Commercial livestock farming is another type of uh, uh, livestock farming used for, uh, uh, it, basically it's, it's a large scale farming where the animal products are sold in markets for, and they're even exported at times. Yeah. Here are the inputs, processes, and outputs of commercial livestock farming. See how developed a commercial farm is, a commercial livestock farm. They have proper uh, sheds for the animals, the proper refrigeration facilities for the byproducts. And advantages of livestock farming generally. Animals, they supply food for people, raw material for other industries, such as the animal skin is used for course, textile industries, export 10% to GDP, employment opportunities, natural fertilizers. Problems with the livestock farming in Pakistan are that the grazing grounds for sheep and cattle can lead to overgrazing, and that basically harms the agricultural production. High prices of animal feed, it is expensive for the subsistence farmers to practice a small scale livestock farming. Inefficient marketing systems of milk and other products leads to less profit and low investment in inputs. Pakistan, in Pakistan generally, there is no proper system to market the products of livestock farming. So farmers, they experience losses at times just because of lack of marketing and people usually tend to buy these products from commercial farms and all of these uh, because these products are widely available in the markets in urban areas of the country in the cities so people don't usually go for uh, these small scale farms for any commercial activity and that is a disadvantage to these farms gap in price of livestock products in rural urban areas and the facilities for storage of meat, few veterinary hospitals and vaccination facilities. Yeah, animals, if they catch diseases, they at times die because there's no vaccination available. I mean, not, uh, uh, I'm not talking about all the farms generally, but mostly for the rural areas, the farms in rural areas don't really have these vaccination and medication facilities for the animals. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for Okay, so we're left with just last bit, main livestock resources. You don't have to go into the details. You just know generally the names of the animals, buffalo, sheep, goats, cattle, poultry that are used, that are basically kept on these farms. You won't, you won't be asked about their details individually. Okay, and we are done here, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The topic is done. Please let me know if there is any question, guys, anything that's not clear, particularly regarding the livestock farming. No, everything clear? So here's, here's an open question for everyone. What do you think? We've studied the advantages as well as the problems the livestock industry faces. What do you think? 
is it efficient i mean is it good for if the government invests more in the livestock farms should the government maybe invest more in the livestock farms yes or no and with explanations please yeah the government should invest more in the livestock farms because then it will help the farmers more and uh, the animals will be of better quality so like the meat and the products will be of better quality okay yeah, and also other facilities such as like vaccinations against diseases can be provided by the government. Right. right. So you're saying by investing and by improving these standards, there is a chance that we might overcome the problems that we're facing currently. And that will directly improve the agricultural production there. All right, fair enough. Anybody Sam against this point? Gee, yes, Amna. And sir, also. When we we're going to invest in the livestock farming, so the, many people would get opportunities to be employed in these mm. farms because this is like our, like, it's similar to our Desi culture also, like people mm. farm, people, people just have mm. these livestock, uh, these cattle and everything. So the, uh, the unemployed people would get employment also, and it's our, like, it would also, uh, increase our exports also because if we could if we increase the farms we're gonna make good byproducts and we're gonna export it and that's gonna be increasing our like foreign exchange in it. all right all right so talking about the impacts on the economy that is also right so should all of you are agreeing to this to the investments there's no disagreement, Habiba. Would you maybe like to disagree with this point? That the government shouldn't invest in the livestock farms, maybe? Or are you also agreeing to this point here? Agree. All right. So there's no disagreement. But I would have, I mean, I really wanted to hear a disagreement here. You guys think about it. Wait, if, I think uh, I have one. Uh -huh. problem with it that uh -huh. if the government invests in it they'll expect something in return so uh -huh. the farmer would get less get yes. less money because you have to give some to the government yeah and government has so many other areas to invest in they can invest in crop farming maybe instead of livestock farming they'll get more and rapid return on crop farming as compared to livestock farming yeah so that is on point but again uh think about it guys uh, because we have less than one minute left, meeting might end at any